everyone, this is Rod and welcome to Academia Magica. The topic of today is about reality, the same very reality that um, fundamentally we try to change through the techniques and practice of magic. Basically changing reality is the very foundation of any magical practice regardless of the model that we may use. I mean, we may use the uh, spirit model where actually changes are uh, produced through the agencies of, of spirit and, and demons, or we may use the willpower model where changes are made through our own power, our, our own willpower. This is very similar to the latest uh, Alistair Crowley thinking, in fact, his famous sentence that making changes according to the uh, will. We have other models, the law of attraction, we have endless models. Um, we have planetary forces, we have elemental forces, and even as Giordano Bruno put it, uh, using uh, images, for instance, archetypal images, or specifically for in his case, were the 36 deacons images from the Picatrix, in order to produce changes to reality, to produce changes in the heart and mind of people. Obviously, all this metaphysical discussion is completely divergent from what we are taught in school. Uh, what we are taught in school, I'm referring to the classical or Newtonian physics, that of course is telling us that an object is an object, materiality is materiality, reality is reality, whether we are looking at it or not, is still the same thing even before we look at it, during and after we look at it. Like for instance, this pen is a pen. It was a pen before I bought it. It will still a pen while I have it. It will be a pen one day that it will not belong to me anymore. And I can measure this pen. I can even drop it and know exactly the speed of this pen until it reaches the floor. So classical physics, it gives us a very static image of reality, even to the point that is selling us the concept that almost to the point where is materiality creating consciousness. Nevertheless, the latest finding, and I'm referring to what is uh, commonly addressed as uh, quantum physics or quantum mechanics, well, what it seems there is that things at a quantum level, at a very fundamental uh, level of matter, within the scale, we're talking about the scale of an atom or, or like particles, actually things there are pretty much different from what we are used to think or we are used to uh, what we are taught to. So quantum experiments have proven that uh, particles such as electrons, photons, they exist at the same time in a very, in an infinite array of possibilities within something like an invisible field of energy. And it's only when the observer look at it, go to measure it, that the electron, the photon actually appears. So in other words, what we are saying is that the particle that comes out of this energy wave can only appear in our reality, in our space-time reality, only when there is an observer, there is a conscious observer looking at it or measuring it. And this is already a mind-blowing finding because what we are saying here is that essentially this makes us, the observers, not spectators anymore of reality like what Newtonian and classic physics was trying to tell us, but actually it makes us co-creators at a very fundamental level. So this is telling us that reality is basically one thing, one exist, one thing in existence, and is manifested through a continuous interaction between the observers and the observed, which are also part of the same, the very same reality. It's like, for instance, if we throw a dice, the before matter stage or the quantum state would be considering all the probabilities of the dice to show the number between one and six. And it's only when the observer would look at the result that actually um, the result would make become reality. So the before state, the, the before looking at the result, it would contain all the probabilities uh, and all the possibilities 
and this in quantum physics is expressed through a mathematical formula that is called wave function. The wave function contains is a calculation, is a calculation of probabilities. Like for instance, the wave function of flipping a coin would be a 50% tail and a 50% uh, head. And it's only when it's observed that this wave function collapses into one state. So in other words, what we could say is that through magic technique or magic technology, essentially what we are doing is trying to influence the collapse of the wave function according to our purpose. We could even extend this concept to alchemy, for instance. In alchemy, we have the concept of prime matter, prima materia, where everything comes from. From prime matter, from the prima materia, we will have the three essential, which is salt, uh, mercury, and sulfur. From the three essential, then we will have the four elements. But going back, what is this prime matter? Actually, in this prime matter, it is containing all the possibilities, all the probabilities to create something. So we could say that the prime matter of alchemy, it contains, is in a quantum state, and it does contain essentially the seed of transmutation. So again, basically what we are saying is that at the atom level, at the particle levels, these things are actually not, not real. They are, we are just talking about a world of potential. We're talking about a world of, of possibilities other than real things or, or fact. That means essentially that matter exists only in virtue of a force, the force of the observer, the force of consciousness that brings, that create a reality. And if we can extend the concept of us watching a particle, us watching a photon coming from a field of energy to a material stage, if we extend this whole concept to the universe, actually we could say that the universe must have come to place because of an original consciousness. So basically the whole universe must be conscious. And this concept was very well known especially by Neoplatonists, because this is what we're talking about. When Plotinus were talk was talking about the one, the transcendent entity of the one that emanates from the transcendent to materiality, the first emanation of the one was the nous, and the nous is the divine intellect, is the divine mind, the divine mind that again emanates into the... Um, anima mundi, the soul, the world, the world soul, and finally it creates reality. But the very first thing is still a divine mind, a divine intellect, is still the nous. Plato himself even said that reality is created by the mind, so we can change our reality by changing our mind. But let's make another, a further step in our uh, little quantum explanation to explain another uh, very interesting concept that can very well relate to the study of esotericism, magic and, and occultism in general and is the concept of entanglement. To make it easier basically would be to say like um, going back to our example of the dice, let's say that I throw a dice on a glass table and, and I have two observers. One is under the glass table and one is above the glass table. So I throw the dice and at the same time, when either one of the two observers will look at the dice, not only would collapse the wave function to see the result from his side of the dice, but automatically it would also create the reality for the other observer at the very same time. So if I throw the dice and I'm under the table, the glass table, and I see one, automatically I have collapsed the reality also for the other observer that must see six. Now, of course, the example of the dice is a very simplified example, but this is what really it, it's happening. So it seems that when two particles are entangled, no matter what, 
no matter the distance, no matter the space and time, doesn't matter anymore. When one of the entangled particles changes into a status, automatically the other particle changes to at the same time. And at the same time, meaning no matter what the distance or the speed of light or whatever, it just defeat all kind of physical knowledge that we have today. But these two entangled particles will change at the very same time. So if we extend this concept, thinking that the universe may have been born out of particles, we may well think that the whole universe is an entangled structure, exactly as Heraclitus was saying, from all things one, or even Parmenides with his famous end to pan, all is one. We can think about this concept when we talk in magic about correspondences, when we work on something in order to create something else, like, the, for instance, the butterfly effect or the law of contagion, uh, the law of sympathy. And as I say, the correspondences. So, so we take something knowing that this something is producing an, after, an effect on something else. In Kabbalistic term, we would call the uh, consciousness of Neshma, which is uh, one of the highest consciousness in the Kabbalistic level. Uh, and is, for instance, when something for two persons are very close, like mother and son or, or brother, and something happened to a person, no matter how far, but the other person would feel something. So Neshma also would explain a connection. Neshma would also explain the entanglement. Basically, our experience, our reality, what we call reality, is, is actually a result of a whole set of quantum phenomena um, that builds this reality based on paradox and, and, and probabilities. Where our mental and sensorial structure as human, whether with or without enhancing instrument, perceive it and, and, and learn it in its own codes, it creates this kind of world of appearance. So this would be very similar to what Plato brought us forward with the allegory of the cave. It's like we are pretty much what we see is not the reality itself, the shadow of reality. One of my favorite quotes of Heraclitus, for instance, is that nature, the hidden nature, is stronger than the manifested one, or the hidden harmony is stronger than a manifested one. So we do know, and now we're getting closer and closer through quantum physics to actually accept the fact that the reality that we live in, there is actually a matrix, there is actually something behind that is stronger and produce what we see and what we live on the day-to-day -day basis. Finally, closing on a very beautiful sentence of Goethe, which says that Isis Isis, the famous Isis, the matrix of all, show herself without a veil, but man has cataracts. And this is it for the brief but quite deep discussion of today. If you want to let me know what you think, if you have some experience or some other points to add, please feel free to add it in the comments. As well as if you are not subscribed to the channel, please make sure to subscribe so you will be alerted when the new videos come up. Thank again for, thanks again for staying with me today and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.